Now at 1 o'clock, we're going to start our program. First of all, I'm going to invite Chris Barnett up here from the, the Orion Township Supervisor. He's going to give us a quick update on the race this morning, where we stand with that before we start our regular program. Chris? Thank you, Chief, and thank you everyone for being here. Um, we celebrated our eighth annual Memorial Day 5K, and we added the five mile option last year, this is our second year. Any, any participants from the race that were, we have a few of them. <laughs> All right, our board, our school board was there, our fire chief. Uh, we're so grateful for uh, everyone's participation. Um, this memorial exists because of amazing volunteers in our community. It doesn't exist without the volunteerism and the donations that keep this going. And if you haven't traveled around, I can tell you, and my, I'm unbiased, this is the nicest memorial in the state of Michigan. No question. And, uh, and we're so grateful for the people that take care of it, but we're grateful for the people that support the events that we do that keep this going. Last year we raised $14,000 with that race, uh, with just a couple volunteers. And uh, this year we had 360 participants, our eighth annual. Um, if you didn't come, you can walk, or you don't have to be a runner. Next year we'd love to have, have you join us and continue to grow that event. Uh, and we probably raised close to uh, what we raised last year. And just so you understand, those dollars, every single penny goes into keeping this memorial going, keeping this memorial, um, this amazing place for us to have these events and remember the important things about our community. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, one, one more thank you to Shaner Roofing. They were our premier sponsor, uh, but you can find a lot of information on our Facebook page at the township, all the other sponsors. But to those of you that participated, thank you. And those that you didn't, we would love to see you next year, 9 a.m., and we kick that race off right at Fire Station 1 in the village. So thank you again, and I will turn it back. Thank you, Chris. My name is Bob Smith. I'm with the Orient Veterans Memorial, and I'll be your host today. First of all, everybody stand. Honor Guard, host colors. Next, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance by retired Lieutenant Colonel Cynthia Wright. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next, we'll have the invocation by Brenda Culverhouse. She's a chaplain, VFW Post, Auxiliary 334. <laughs> oh Lord Almighty, we thank thee for the privilege of meeting on this hallowed day in this free nation to honor our noble dead and to rededicate our lives to you and our country. Remember those who lived and died fighting to protect the dignity and the freedom of mankind. Let our spirits be proud of them. Let our hearts be compassionate and our minds clear and determined in giving them honor and respect. As we remember the departed, let us be true soldiers of war and peace. Let us be courageous protectors and true guardians of freedom. Let this day be a day of commemoration <laughs> and honor to those who sacrificed their lives in order to give us liberty and our nation security. Remember them, O oh Lord, 
in your mercy and have compassion on us. Heavenly Father, in your hands are the living and the dead. We give you thanks for all those, our comrades and sisters, who have laid down their lives in the service of our country. May they rest in peace and may perpetual light shine upon them. May the good work of seeking justice for the oppressed and peace for all mankind be rewarded with success <laughs> and that their sacrifices shall not be in vain. And we will never fail to remember the awesome cost of the freedom that which we enjoy. On this day of sacred memory, we ask for grace and power to live truer lives, to be better servants of the living God, finer fathers and mothers, nobler sons and daughters, and more loyal citizens of this great country. Lord, grant that we may yet see the day when war shall no longer be, and peace shall be our common possession. The day will be your will shall be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, hear our prayers for our sakes. Amen. Amen. Now I will invite up Kathy McMahon for the national anthem. Let us all sing together our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rockets rattling the bombs bursting gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star-spangled You may be seated. Before I call up our welcoming speech, I'd like to make a comment about our Lord and His Son, Jesus Christ. Today, when we woke up, they were watering the flowers of the graves of those veterans so they would grow. And then this afternoon, they shut it down so we could come up here and water those veterans. So, with that said, the gentleman I'm gonna invite up to do the welcoming, this place probably would not be here without his help. He's been an active for over 30 years doing this uh, Orient Veterans Memorial, putting this thing together and he's stepped down this year. He became chairman, airman, airman, I can't say it. Emeritus. Airman. Emeritus. Emeritus. <laughs> I got out. I practiced it 15 times and still don't come out. <laughs> anyway, call up Dr. Joseph Master Mateo. Yay! First of all, I want to thank Bob for those most precious words. 
and it's wonderful working with so many people over the 30 years and uh, I give them more credit than I should reserve. So with that, thank you very much. Next, I'm going to call up Captain Matthew, Matthew Butkus. He's going to give us our keynote speech today. Yeah, thank you, Bob. Yeah, thank you to the Lake Orion Veterans Memorial Organization for the opportunity to speak with you all today. Uh, it's great to see the Lake Orion Fire Department with the, the uh, display of old glory. The help of uh, the Lake Orion Police Department, Veterans of Foreign Wars, Post 334 and its Auxiliary, thank you. The village and townships of Lake Orion. The, without their support, to this uh, would not be possible. So uh, all those, all the folks, and all, and for all of you, taking time out of your days, out of your weekends, to be here. Uh, almost every seat is filled. That it, uh, actually took me up a little bit to see. Uh, it it's, makes it more of an honor and a privilege for me to be here today, knowing that you think that much of to be here yourselves. <coughs> So thank you all for taking the time to remember the reason behind Memorial Day. Reflect and recognize those who made the ultimate sacrifice, those who lost their lives in the service of our nation, in defense of our freedom, and defending our way of life. We pause from our busy lives to take a few minutes of solemnity. It's not, to put, not intended to put a damper on the weekend, but on the contrary, that we should live our lives to the fullest and acknowledge that their sacrifices have been worthwhile, that their sacrifices were not in vain. Many of you probably recall the history of Memorial Day being originally called Decoration Day. And it originally honored those who lost their lives while fighting in the Civil War. <laughs> However, during World War I followed a few decades later, the United States found itself embroiled in another major conflict. And the, since then, the holiday has evolved to commemorate American military personnel who died in all wars, now including World War II, the Korean War, the Vietnam War, wars in the Persian Gulf, Iraq, and Afghanistan. And we'll be reading some of the names later, honoring those that, from the community here that have lost their lives. For decades, Memorial Day continued to be observed on May 30th. It was a date that General John A. Logan, who was a veteran of the Mexican-American War and a Union Army General, as well as being a congressman, he had selected the first Decoration Day. It followed sometime later in, in, eight, in 1968, when Congress passed the Uniform Monday Holiday Act, which established Memorial Day, which is the last Monday in, in May, to create a three-day weekend, at that time considered for a uh, benefit for, for federal employees. The change went into effect in 1971. And the same law also declared that Memorial Day was a federal holiday, or is a federal holiday. Now, Memorial Day and us gathering here today is indeed to honor all those servicemen and women who died in the service of our country, distinctly we celebrate all veterans on Veterans Day in November. So with that in mind, and preparing for today, a, a particular phrase stood out in, in my mind. All gave some, and some gave all. This phrase has been attributed to the Korean War veteran and Purple Heart recipient, Howard William Osterkamp from Denton, Ohio. He served in the Army from 1951 to 1953. That's during the Korean War, during which he experienced heavy combat with his unit, the Charlie Company, 5th Regimental Combat Team. So I'm, I'd like to reflect on, on this phrase for a little bit and, uh, and its meaning as I see it. For those that indeed gave all, this is the ultimate sacrifice. And to quote 
I think many of you know from the Bible, from John, there's no greater love than to lay down one's life for one's friends. Those service members cease to be with us. No longer would we be fighting shoulder to shoulder with them as our brothers and sisters in arms. They gave up, gave up the opportunity to return home and, and be with their loved ones, with their families and friends. Perhaps they gave the opportunity to see their parents again, share a meal. They gave the chance to start a family or even continue a family with the wife and hus or husband. They gave the chance of a successful career, barbecues with friends in the summertime, special dinners during holidays, seeing children's firsts, pitching in with their communities, participating in events like this. And of course, they gave up the chance to grow old. They gave so the rest of us could enjoy these events, enjoy our freedoms, and with the hope that the people of other lands could carry on their traditions and beliefs. For those that gave some, there's also loss and sacrifice. Probably starting out with loss of youth as a force to mature quickly, grow up, so to speak, and deal with the stark realities of war that is occurring right in front of their eyes. A loss of innocence that goes with those experiences. For those that were wounded or injured, a loss of some function of their bodies, physical pains that will persist throughout their lives. Even psychological impact forever felt by the mental anguish of witnessing trauma and being bluntly reminded of our own, or our own mortality again and again. And of course, the families of the service members. They sacrificed through the loss of their loved ones, suffering one of the worst events, if not the worst, in their lives. No longer being able to spend another moment with their son or daughter, brother, sister, father, mother, husband, wife. No longer able to share the joys of life or have that person to turn to during the hard times. All gave some, some gave all. We take these moments now during our busy lives to remember, to recognize the price of freedom, and salute all who gave. Indeed, for all of these losses, it's imperative that we, as we live, strive to make the most of our lives. Live life to the fullest. Spend the time and opportunities with family and friends as we are this weekend. Be active in our communities. Speak out against injustice. Stand up for those that are weaker than us. Exercise our freedoms. Especially this year, get out and vote in the next election. And then the one after that, and the one after that. Whether our candidate or cause wins or loses, we continue and exercise that freedom, that right. Do something meaningful, whether it's through a career, our family, our neighborhood, within a hobby, circle of friends, community, state, our nation, or even the world. It could be something small, it could be something on a grand scale, it could be helping out a neighbor. Do what is in your heart make a difference, and make living worthwhile. Do it for yourself, and do it for those that sacrificed their lives so that you would have the opportunity to make a difference. So again, thank you for allowing me to speak with you today. May God bless you, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you. For those, that, for those that know Dr. Joseph Master Patel, he's never a man of just five words. He wants to say a couple more words. Yes, uh, I am Captain Master Patel of the U.S. Army. And uh, 
Yes, before we begin our program, I would like to acknowledge uh, the branches of service and to have the person stand up, or if he's not here because uh, he's gone, then uh, his family, his family, can you hear me now? His family will also represent him. With that said, uh, the, uh, and shout out a hoorah, how about that? We, we begin with the Army. Anybody here in the Army, would you please stand or relatives of him? And remain standing until we get everybody up. Navy, and, so, and your name please. Navy? Hoorah! Hoorah, Navy! Hoorah. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the help, Lee. <laughs> Air Force. Anybody from the Air Force? With a, with a hoorah. Hoorah! And Marines. How about Marines? Do we have any Marines? Let's have a hoorah again. Good. Remain standing. Coast Guard. Coast Guard. Any Coast Guard here? If, are you standing for the Coast Guard, sir? No, Army. I just, you said if you're in the Army. That was a long that's time ago. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> that was a long time ago. We'll take you now. <laughs> and uh, Merchant Marines? No Merchant Marines? Coast Guard? Let's try Space Force. Coast Guard? <laughs> Marines. Any Marines here? Okay. And Space Force. Those are the seven flags behind you. And you might want to look at them and look at Space Force because that was just added in the last two years. Thank you. You may be seated. A few words, a few words we gathered here to, today on the most important of all legal holidays. Memorial Day. Today, we honor all service men and women who died in the defense of our country. Memorial Day is unique among American holidays. We do not honor a particular date or event or a battle or the end of a war. On Memorial Day, we do not honor an individual that we know of such as a president or general. On Memorial Day, we honor over one million American men and women who gave their lives while defending our country from the days of George Washington to the present. Thank you. Next, I'm going to call up uh, Jim Hubbard, the commander of the PFW or the PFW Post 334, North, o North Oakland County. He's going to present uh, Veteran of the Year. I'd like to thank Bob for the opportunity to introduce our Veteran of the Year. Some of you know her. I've known her the last few years. Uh, I don't think you could be a, a better human being. Cindy Wright, if you step forward, please. Thank you very much for this honor. Um, I am an abundantly blessed person. I know that. I thank God every day for that. Part of that blessing truly is being part of the VFW and involved in our veterans ministry at our church at Lake Point. My involvement in the VFW is primarily through the Honor Guard. We do um, a lot of funerals up at Great Lakes. We do parades. We speak at schools, go to nursing homes. When my husband died a couple years ago, the Honor Guard came out to Great Lakes 
and they did the ceremony. They did the three volley salute, they did the uh, taps, and the flag presentation. And it was one of the most moving, special moments that I will remember, and I will always remember that for the rest of my life. That's what made me want to be part of the Honor Guard, to be able to continue to pay tribute to those veterans that we lose and pass it on. I've gotten to know the guys of the VFW and the women with the auxiliary, and I have never met any more patriotic, dedicated, committed, devoted, able to give their time, their energy, their money to care for veterans locally, here in this community, statewide, nationally. They care for the spouses, they care for the children. Uh, the VFW runs a national home that's actually here in Eaton Rapids. Right now there's 132 fam uh, people there, 92 are children, and those are veterans that have children and they are there to be taken care of and provided for. It was an eye-opener for me to see everything that they've done. I'm going to cut this short. Um, as an award winner, I promise I will do the very best to honor you and represent my community and make a difference in all we do. Thank you. Thank you, Cindy. We're going to try to continue on, but if it gets too bad and you want to go to your cars, we understand. Next, we're going to have the placing of the wreath. Joyce Woody, Woody Wuss, and uh, she's an E4 spec, spec E4 with uh, combat medic with Cynthia Wright leading her on. Do we need to get those scoopers out? Okay. Next, we're going to honor those on the plaque behind you or around you in the middle of the memorial here by reading off the names, starting with Bob Mahan, VFW Post 334, we'll do the Civil War. Thomas M. Bowers. Daniel Burton. Roswell Campbell. Frank Thornley. Henry C. Fairchild. Hiram Hemingway. Webster Eldolf Marsh. William A. Churchill. Eugene L. Rose. Charles Soper. World War One. R.C. Miller, Post 334, BFW Post. Otis C. Brewster. Noel Thomas Charlton, Vern E. Poland, World War II, Randy Stetson, VFW Post 334.
Laverne H. Becker, Charles Pittet, Roger Feeblecorn, Chester C. Campbell, Donald R. Sova, Lee F. Carpenter, Alan B. Swam, Walter F. Walter, Clayton Albert Decker, Edwin Dewey, J.V. Burns, Everett Pickering, Bernard A. Kolak, Wap, Anthony F. Summer, Erwin A. Cruz, Julian Moore, Marvin F. Lanfear, Robert Leland Decker, Korean Conflict, Dr. Joseph Bessemer-Dale. James Crawford. Harry Pacer. Edward Wilson Garlic. Ernest C. Feeblecorn. Charles Daly. Vietnam War and Current Conflicts, VFW Post 334, Commander Jim Hubbard. The Vietnam War. Raymond L. Whipley. John A. Wood. Operation Endurance Freedom. Raymond J. Flowers. Operation Iraqi Freedom. Trevor Braddock. Honoring those veterans that have passed away since last Memorial Day is uh, Kim Urbanowski, Township Treasurer. Ernest W. Baker, Tom Byers, Bruce Jacobson, Robert Jukestock, James Howard Mouse, N. Bloomstrand, Richard Hamilton, Algirdas Josies, Jeffrey Lindsay, James Munoz. And those that have, that have passed away since last year from the American Legion Post 233 in Lake Orion and uh, 108 in Oxford is Steve Hawkswell. The Lake Orion Post 233. William Hammond. Richard Holmquist. Daniel Moore, Daniel Schneckert, James Stillhall, and Randolph Slominski, and Pot Oxford Post 108, Keith Etcherson, Roy Blankenberg, Victor Bovee, William Brown, Robert Klaus, Brad Harrion, Lester Maher, Gary Pender, Charles Sparter and Helen Hope. Since the rain's holding off, can we have a moment of silent prayer? Just bow our heads and pray for those that have, uh, that we read the names off to. Okay, I'm going to ask Kathy McMinn to come back up and she's going to lead us in God Bless America.
as the storm clouds gather far across the sea. Let us pledge allegiance to this land that's free. May we all be grateful for this land so fair as we raise our voices in this solemn prayer. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. From the mountains to the prairie to the oceans wide with foam. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America, my home, sweet home. God bless America. I'll ask Brenda Culver House to come back up and give us a benediction. Eternal Father <clears throat> and ever loving God, we give thanks for the opportunity to gather here on this hallowed day to honor our noble dead and to rededicate our lives to you and our country. We thank you for the opportunity to live through these days of challenges, for the hours of the testing of our loyalty to our national heritage, and for our devotion to the high ideals for which others have lived and died. Bless, O oh God, the thousands of disabled veterans in our hospitals today, and also the homeless veterans in our land. Please relieve their pain, ease their suffering, and give them cheer and hope. Help us to respond gladly and generously to their needs of body and spirit. We pray for our men and women who are still prisoners of war and missing in action in strange and foreign lands. Give them courage in the face of hopelessness and comfort in the midst of loneliness. As we leave our homes on this day of sacred memory, we ask for grace and power to live truer lives and more loyal citizens to the great country and of the world. Please watch over us as we travel to our destinations so that we may arrive safely and that we may again come together to remember those who gave the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. Amen. Please stand and face the flag. Hand salute, one. You can sit down for a few minutes or for a second here while we're waiting for the honor guard to come and retrieve, uh, retire the colors. A few people I want to thank for today. First of all, Bob Watros for uh, getting this all set up with his crew. 
This place is immaculate because of Bob Watros and his crew. Next, Joanne Van Tassel for setting up the program. She's our secretary with the Orient Veterans Memorial. Lee Smith for setting up the um, sounds and taking pictures along with his son. He's the vice chair of the Ori Veterans Memorial. <laughs> his son Gordon, who does most of the work. <laughs> if anybody else has stepped out today to help out, it was really appreciated. Before you leave today, stop over here if you want to see if they, what they have over here. You might want to purchase something. Honor Guard, please retire colors. Please stand. Put our left face. Prepare to retrieve the colors. Retrieve. Color guard, left face. Forward, march. Two. I want to thank each and every one of you for showing up today. The weather was not perfect, but it was good enough to come out here to honor those who are no longer with us. Thank you very much.